Okay, well, welcome everyone to NCBLI's Rise, Rights in Action, The Difference a Lawyer Can Make. This is a lunchtime series to create awareness of victims' rights and to highlight the legal work of our RISE clinics and to discuss how NCBLI supports attorneys across the country as they fight for victims to ensure that they have a voice in justice. We are here live every Wednesday, well, the third Wednesday of each month. We've been doing this for a couple months now and we will be here through the rest of the year. And we're doing this to speak to our legal partners across the country to really highlight the great work that they are doing, engaging around elevating, enforcing and activating victims' rights. The National Crime Victim Law Institute fields thousands of technical assistance requests every year. And we want you to know if you ever have a challenge or a difficulty or an issue where a victim's rights is at stake or you're questioning what you could do for a crime victim, we want you to know that you can access that technical assistance at ncvli.org. So this month we're excited we're going to Florida and we have Rochelle Roll with us and she is a crime victims rights attorney from Legal Aid Services of Broward County um, again in Florida. So Rochelle, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule today for to be here with us and also for all the work that you do on behalf of crime victims. So welcome. Thank you, Jennifer. And as she mentioned, my name is Rochelle Roll. I am one of the victims rights attorneys at Legal Aid Service of Broward County. So our RISE clinic is comprised of two different organizations. It's Legal Aid Service of Broward County and our sister organization, Coast to Coast Legal Aid. At Legal Aid Service of Broward County, where I work, we primarily handle uh, felony crimes and non-intimate partner crimes. At Coast to Coast Legal Aid, they handle misdemeanor crimes and uh, intimate partner crimes. So some of the crimes that we see at Legal Aid primarily are um, sexual assault crimes, assault, um, excuse me, robbery, homicide, burglary, et cetera. At Coast to Coast Legal Aid, they see more cases like domestic violence, stalking, things of that nature. But our services are really important because legal representation for victims of crime have generally been non-existent in Florida. In 2019, Marcy's Law went into effect and that now affords victims the right to have an attorney in court. So we now have a way through this RISE grant to represent victims of crime, which we've never had before. Awesome, it's wonderful. So tell us a little bit about a recent case or a victim's rights issue. Understanding and appreciating confidentiality is, is vital, but talk to us about a case that you've had to recently navigate on behalf of a client. Yeah, I have a client that was a victim of an armed robbery. Uh, she was at her workplace and three masked gunmen came in and unfortunately they held her up at gunpoint. You know, they hit her over the head with the gun, they threatened her and they took the store's money and they fled. Uh, one of the concerns and one of the issues that we found when the case was filed was that the victim's information was made public on the clerk of court's website. So this was a huge issue. And when we told the victim, she was automatically afraid because number one, she was cooperating with law enforcement. You know, number two, she just didn't want them to come back and potentially harm her, you know, for obviously, you know, assisting with the investigation. So I immediately filed a motion with the court to have her information redacted from the public record and um, to also have her proceed by her initials. So in Florida, you know, usually there are only two situations where a victim can have their information, uh, you know, protected. If they're like a minor or a sexual assault victim, they're automatically, you know, granted that liberty. But mm -hmm for other crime victims. So when I filed the motion, thankfully the court granted my motion to allow her to have her information redacted and proceed by initials. Um, two of the rights that victims have in Florida are to be reasonably protected from the accused and also to have the, the to prevent the disclosure of their information, um, you know, that's made public on, on websites. So that's something that uh, we were able to do for this victim and it really put her at ease and ensured that the perpetrators would not be able to know where she lived or know any other personal information about her. So to date, one of the perpetrators is still at large. So it's really imperative that, you know, her safety, her protection, you know, are, are, are something that's really important until the case is resolved. Absolutely. I mean, what a scary case. And I can't imagine the degree of fear um, that, that that person was facing and, you know, to be able to afford them a little bit of security and comfort through victims' rights is so important. So right. talk to me about what would it have been like for, for this person to navigate this process without an attorney? Like, would it have been even possible to proceed this way without a victim's rights attorney? Like, how would a survivor or a victim even know to, to be able to access the courts in this way? Can you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, and I think a lot of victims don't know, and especially because the law is new here in Florida, a lot of victims are not aware of their rights. They just kind of go along with the process because they feel like they have to. Mm -hmm. um, representation, I don't think she would really understand what she could or could do. She would not have known she could go to the court and request that her information be redacted. Um, and therefore, she would have been in danger. Um, she would have been in danger of these people knowing her home address, her, her full name, things of that nature. So, you know, after the incident, she actually had a lot of anxiety because, you know, not only did this happen at her workplace, but she doesn't live far from where she works. So she was concerned. Mm -hmm that, you know, at least they might know the general area that she's in, if she's at the grocery store or just locally shopping in the community, they might see her and recognize her. So I think a lot of victims really don't know their rights under their law. And that's why it's important that they have an attorney to help them navigate the system. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again so much. So talk a little bit about how did NCVLI resource you? What, what kind of assistance were you able to access? And then what in this particular case, right? Because this is such a safety, privacy, security issue here. What can other jurisdictions learn about your success here? Because this is really a great success. Yeah, so with NCVLI, I was able to use one of the templates provided by the NAVRA uh, form bank that they have, and that was instrumental. I used the motion to redact a victim's personal information and to proceed by initials. Um, so, you know, that was really helpful. Um, I was able to file that on behalf of a robbery victim uh, for the first time and get a court order on that. So I would say for, you know, attorneys and other jurisdictions is really assert the rights in court, you know, file motions so you can see what the court will or will you know, not let you do in your jurisdiction and get a ruling on it. So now that I have that ruling, I know that I can go forward for additional clients and file similar motions and hopefully get similar results. Wonderful. And for those of you who don't know, we have this NAVRA website, which is the National Association of Victims Rights Attorneys. And there is just a plethora of resources on this website, right? From sample pleadings to templates, but also the Victims Rights Library, which is this expansive searchable database. And it's, it's unique in the sense that you can really quickly access victims' rights cases, as opposed to using like a Westlaw where you really, really have to research and dig. So we'll put those resources in the chat for you because they're invaluable for folks. So this might be a no-brainer, right, <laughs> Rochelle? But would you recommend um, to other victims' rights attorneys the resources that NCBLI has and also this incredible network of RISE clinics that we have across the country? Absolutely. NCVLI has been instrumental in helping our clinic provide valuable services to victims um, from the online resources, such as the form banks, as I mentioned, the toolkit, the monthly clinic calls that we have with other clinics. We've learned so much and we've been able to implement a lot of the advice and resources from NCVLI and we would not be where we are today without them. Uh, we're new to victims' rights, like I said, in our jurisdiction, so it's great to have an organization who's been doing this work for years and that can guide us along the way. We're like, truly grateful for their knowledge and expertise in this area. Wonderful. Well, we're grateful for you and the innovative work that you're doing and really taking, elevating, you know, Marcy's Law and, and really putting it into practice to protect victims and potentially save lives. In this case, very, very real costs at stake here. So, where can people learn about you? Obviously, Florida is a large state. So yes. tell us a little bit more about your unique jurisdiction and where people can find you and, and how they can access your services. So we're located in South Florida. We're in Broward County. The best way to make contact with us is via email. And that's at rise at legalaid.org. So that's R-I-S-E at legalaid.org. Uh, once someone contacts their, us there, we can you know, immediately respond back. We have a, a wealth of resources that we can provide. We can provide our RISE brochure. We can provide PowerPoint presentations. We recently did a pro bono attorney training. So we have a lot of resources that we can provide. That email is also good for victims of crime or anyone who wants to refer clients to us. They can also contact us at that email address and one of our attorneys will return uh, their email at our earliest convenience. Wonderful. And we will definitely drop that email into the comments as well. And as we stated, Florida is a large state, but that doesn't mean that the resources and the services that NCBLI, we cross all states. 
and, yes. and the entire country. And so if one of our clinics can't meet your needs specifically in the jurisdiction that you are in, still reach out to NCVLI because the resources that we have can really help. Uh, Rochelle, thank you. Thank you so much again for the good work that you're doing. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us here today. Uh, and again, all of you, thank you for tuning in. Please join us next Wednesday, or next month on the third Wednesday. And to learn more about the National Crime Victim Law Institute and all of the incredible resources that we talked about today, go to ncvli.org. Until next month on the third Wednesday, uh, be good. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.